Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Courtside with Beelance and Tennis, part of the Tennis Channel Podcast Network. We are happy to have with us on tonight a former NCAA singles and doubles champion from the University of Florida, two-time Olympian, and now the co-founder of Grip MD, Mark Merklin. And we all know teaching professionals all know the importance of teaching the right grips and tennis to its students. And with Grip MD, it is an important teaching tool that students can use when working on their game. To hear more about this product and to hear more about Mark, please welcome to the pod, Mark Merklin. Uh, go Gators, huh? Oh, yeah. They did it. <laughs> they did it. Amazing. Amazing. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, thanks for uh, walking us through this new product. I know you're really big on it. Um, I know you and your, co, uh, your co-founder um, fired up about it. Before we get into the product itself, you have quite a background, and, and, and I want the listeners to kind of hear about it from you. So um, I mentioned a couple things in the intro, but I want to hear a little bit more specifics from you yourself. So talk a little bit about your junior career, collegiate career, which was incredible, and your pro career as well. Well, thanks. Yeah, it's uh, I'm, I'm 49 now, so it's going to I hope all these things I'm saying are correct, but it, it's uh, it was an amazing run for me as a, as a junior. I, I love the game and I started playing when I was about eight years old and was really competitive with it and kind of stayed in the top 10, top 15 in, in Florida, which was really tough at the time. And slowly as I got older, I started playing all the national tournaments. Um, did well, Orange Bowl won a doubles tournament there, a doubles title there with uh, Chris Kokotis. Um, Kalamazoo won singles there. Uh, and the boys 16s, in the 18s, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't win that, that wild card into the open, but I was always kind of in the top 10 in the nation. And then uh, as I got a little older, I realized I needed to make some changes to my game. And I ended up at age 18 switching from, I was two hands on both sides. And I switched, uh, I dropped one hand on the right side and, and uh, actually lost my scholarship to the University of Georgia, probably because of that. I mean, I, they, oh, I think they were 18 at 18. Yeah. You dropped it. Wow. Yeah. So it, it, uh, I ended up with searching for a school. So uh, University of Florida, Ian Duvenet gave me a chance and I, you know, I went there and I feel like uh, that was a blessing because we were just kind of paving the way a little bit. The team was really good and they were just missing, you know, one or two pieces and, and we got that going. And, um, you know, I feel like uh, I was, I was blessed, definitely blessed to have that coaching staff with Bruce Burke, who's now at Texas. Uh, Ian now is at Vanderbilt and had great teammates who uh, are are coaching now as well, but we uh, ended up winning the doubles title with uh, Dave Blair in 93, and then the NCAA singles title in 94, and then turned pro and um, did okay. I mean, I singles, got to 160 in the world, played all the grand slams, had some decent wins against good, you know, some top players, but didn't really break through, but but doubles, I, I did a little better. I uh, got to, I think, 35 in the world and won four tour events and, and got to go to the Olympics, actually, with Mark Knowles, who uh, carried me there. That was, <laughs> that he was at the time, like two or three in the world. So he got us into the event and we almost medaled. So uh, that was exciting. Um, Mark Knowles also on. Coaching. Mark Knowles, you could see Mark Knowles a lot on Tennis Channel as well. So quick plug for, for Mark Knowles on, on uh, Tennis yeah. Channel as well. But you're, um, I know you're still close to following the, the Florida Gators. I know you're happy. You're really happy for Brian. Um, Sheldon as well. I mean, what, what, what a ride that was. He's the only one, right? He's the first one to win a, a title on the girls side of Georgia tech. Um, and the boys at Florida, right? That's right. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Florida, it, it was, you know, quarter semis and then, a, you know, a bit of a struggle. And then we, uh, I coached there for a little bit with Brian and then, uh, Tanner stump came in and, uh, Scott Perlman and, and, uh, Brian, obviously they, they were getting close and you knew it was due and uh, it was amazing. I brought my daughter there with me, watched the match and we got to see Ben, you know, Shelton clinch it, who Ben, when I was at Florida, was just a little guy running around and wanted to be a Gator. And it just, it just seemed like a dream come true. The whole thing was, was just amazing. And uh, it was great. It was really neat to see. 
Oh, for sure. So, I mean, you had an incredible junior career. The things you mentioned, I know you kind of like don't really, really take a lot of attention to yourself, but you know, winning Kalamazoo 16s or 18s is amazing. Okay. Um, (laughs) I mean, you had an amazing career, collegiate career, you win singles and doubles. It's not, I mean, that's incredible. And then again, pro career singles and doubles, you make top 35 in doubles. Um, it's pretty special. Very, 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 very few people get to do, uh, uh, a 16th of what you've accomplished. I'll say that. Tell, talk a little bit about the transition that you made from playing into um, the coaching slash teaching arena in tennis. So I, I started with the USTA, right? About, let's see, about a year off tour. Started with the USTA. It was so time frame Martin. about, time frame around, when did you start that? Like early So 2000? that was like, gee whiz, that was like, Oh man, um, you got me there. So I'm thinking around early 2000, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah, like we'll go with that. Yeah, about 2003, around there, and um, just I loved it. I, I had a group of young kids who now, you know, uh, Austin Krychek, Jameer Jenkins. Um, I had a good group. Like uh, you had Bradley, Bradley Klon. I don't know if you know. You, I'm sure you know a lot yeah, of these guys. He won. He won and, uh, and, a he, I think he won a Winneka Challenger. It's about 25 minutes from my house. Bradley played at wow. Stanford. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. Great player. Great player. Amazing group that they, you know, and so I had a lot of coaches helping me and teaching me and uh, working alongside them. And then I was traveling with these young players and just learning like on the fly quickly. Um, I, I took a, a, a real passion to it because I, I felt like it was something I had a lot to give back and a lot that I learned from the tour. And then James Blake, you know, was a close friend of mine and, and um, who still is a close friend of mine. He gave me the opportunity to come on board with Brian Barker and, and learn from them on the tour. And then I was, you know, basically on the court with all these top players that he would play with, you know, guys, the Djokovic, Nadal, Gonzalez, and seeing all these guys practice every day. Really, I learned a ton and, and I felt like I, I had a lot to give back. You know, unbelievable tennis. experience. I'm, I'm sure it is. And by the way, I know you and I talked about it right before we hit the record button for the listeners. Um, I had James on, it was back in February of 2020. We had him in Del Rey and go, uh, please make sure to go check out that episode. Um, Mark, Mark knows about it already. Uh, we go point by point breakdown of that epic fifth set tie break between James and Andre. Uh, it was at the 2005 us open quarterfinals went to like two in the morning. Uh, give that one a listen. It, it was an unbelievable match. And, and Mark told me he remembers exactly where he was every point of that match. So um, mm-hmm. what an experience for you to see coaching at that level. It's totally different than being a player, right? I mean, totally different. Mm-hmm. Totally different. And, and again, like I was, you know, ranked and I was around those guys, but I would always lose in the tournaments early, but to be there, you know, around in the quarterfinals of a grand slam, you know, James was doing that on, you know, not on a regular basis, but a a few times. And then he went all the way to the finals in Shanghai. So you get to see these guys when they're training, what they do before and after they, you know, it, and then you see them training up to big events, how they're tapering and how much they're doing, what they're eating. It was, so much knowledge to bring back to other players that I felt like this is just, I mean, I, I learned so much more, you know, these guys, are, there's a reason why they're up there in the top, you know, 20, top 10, top five. It's, there's a, you know, tiny little a difference between all these players, but it makes such a big, a, yeah. a, a big deal when, when uh, you're dealing with point by point. Yep. You, you hear it all the time and it's so true. Speaking of James, I know he's endorsed, um, your newest product that we're going to talk a little bit about right now. It's called grip MD, right? And we all talk, it's all the coaches talk about the getting that continental grip, whatever grip it is. But in this case, Mm -hmm. we'll talk continental grip and early age serve volley. Um, And people have different ways of teaching it. They talk about the, the bevels on a racket handle and they, they show by example, they describe it differently by words. Um, Yours is, is it like a sleeve on the racket? On the racket yeah, handle, is that what it is? It is. So it it's, it comes in in uh, it, it looks kind of like this here if you're if you're able to see it on TV. But it com- it comes in two. It will pieces. eventually put this onto YouTube so that people will will be able to see what. So you're doing. here's this is the kids model here, 
and this is the adult model and it comes it, it separates here and it just goes right onto the grip and clicks in okay just like this so so it puts you right into the proper grip every single time it's almost like when i played my coach duct taped my hand to, <laughs> to the uh to, to the racket so this gets you right in the proper grip and, and it's very important to have your the palm of your hand uh in in the right position and this just takes out the guesswork so the coach doesn't have to go across the net and you know make sure that you're in the right grip and we've, we've now, been let using me ask it so let years. me clarify is this just for the continental grip or it can work for any other grip that you're talking about so so just continental right now we're going to okay. get in we're going to move into other grips but we're just doing currently we're a continental from size zero to size four and a half grip sizes so, so when the kids start when when the kids are adults doesn't matter whatever level they are learning the continental grip you use it with the sleeve on and then when they get the hang of it do you take the sleeve off and it just feels a little bit more natural on the normal racket handle it just it speeds up the process that you know uh, just it's well, from what we've seen because we've, we've been using this now for over two years and it, it just came out we just launched it in april but it, it teaches them to get a feel for it. And then I like, what I like to do is take the, take this off, which is so easy. It comes right off the grips, you know, very easily. And then you put it right back on. So we do about 10 minutes with it where they're getting the feel of it. And then we'll take it off, see how they're making sure they're not pancaking volleys, you know, where <laughs> you come in with that semi-Western grip and you stab at it like this. And it just really takes the time it, it just it really really lessens the time to, to learn it because you know the last thing you want to do is just have your grips slow you down and hold you back from where you should be because you how, really you know you can't hit all the shots without it how'd you come up with this because i'm sure when you started teaching it was just like you know the normal way that other people would try to teach it too how'd you come up with with this idea we just you know matt daly and i and, and matt's you know i wish matt was was here to talk about it too but he really felt like, all right, if a kid was struggling, we found like on forehand grips where they go, the kids tend to go really Western when they're younger. And then you're constantly trying to tinker them back to semi or a weak semi into Eastern or something, just to get the kids to feel the ball and not spin it so much at a young age that it, it just took forever. You teach them one lesson and then they come back next week and they're not doing it and not doing it so we just messed around in the kitchen making permanent molds on rackets with us this plastic material and and it we found that once the kids could feel it and hold it and it, it, even walk around the house with it felt like they could learn it fast and and that's exactly what happened so we wanted to start with the continental which is such an important grip and then we're going to move into other grips soon. super cool so you can get this you buy it online right online yes online. so you could buy it online the the website is www.thegripmd.com again it's www.thegripmd.com um you could follow it on social media on facebook as well um it's a grip md facebook page you could also find it on instagram grip md uh on there as well Pretty cool, huh? You didn't think you'd be you'd be in this part of like the I don't know creative, inventive type of business when you got into the coaching world, huh? No, no. I mean, I I, I definitely when I started working with younger players, it it got to the point where I was just like, how in the world am I gonna like teach these kids fast? Because I'm I didn't want to lose kids. It was kind of like going to the dentist. I mean, every week I'm just messing with their grips and they're getting annoyed with me. And, you know, so you can lose players like that at a young age and make, and they, they might not want to play. So I just figured I got, we got to figure out a way to make this whole thing happen fast and, and get them through this. And so they can start rallying and have a, you know, a fun experience. And may I, and it, ask, and it may I ask like a price point for, for this right about now so, on the website? So right now, right now the kids models 25 and we're, we're, we're selling this right now, uh, it pre-orders for 25 and then the adult one is right now is 39.95 okay and, and it's it uh, pre-shipping all that good stuff yeah perfect 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 and if anyone's local by you do you have extra that they can just get it from you directly or they still have to go online so, yeah I, we're at stewart's in boca we we have uh we have them at stewart's in boca and and we're slowly starting to um get into pro shops 
we we have what we're doing is we're waiting on the kids model and that arrives in September. So once that kids model comes out, we're going to be at country clubs and numerous pro shops and that sort of thing. Right now we're we're just at Stewart's and online and we'll be on Amazon very soon. But we, we're brand new and um, we and it's going well. You know, we're getting a lot of positive feedback. And it's exciting. So uh, yeah, awesome. Give it a, awesome, give it a awesome. Well, uh, um, we're recording this close, um, very close to the U.S. Open. So before I let you go, I just got to ask you for one prediction. And it's, uh, it's a yes or no. You don't need to give a reason, but you're going to be on record. So, you know, be careful with what you say. Does Novak Djokovic win the calendar Grand Slam? Mm, I don't think so. I there don't think it. so. I- yeah, I, 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 now if you ask me who's going to win it, I, I, I don't, I'm not quite sure. There's a couple, but. But you're taking the field. Like, you're yeah. taking the field. You're not taking. I'm going to take the field. I'm going to take the field. I love Novak and I, I feel like he's uh, just an amazing player and, and mentally unbelievable. But I think the Olympics shook him up a little. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, we, again, we, this, this may be released, you know, right shortly after or like during the open. So you're on record. We'll see if you, uh, (laughs) if you're right, Mark, this was a lot of fun. Thank you. Uh, thank you about talking to your background and talking about this product. It's super cool. And, um, wish you the best of luck with it and you know, anything we can do, let, let us know to help. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks Thanks for having me. Take care.